It wasn't really an accelerated process. This bill was introduced over a month ago. It's a topic that's been known to everybody since earlier in the summer. Uh, we had hours of testimony, and everybody got to say their piece, including over 55 witnesses in the committee. Um, and senators, all the senators got to ask unlimited amounts of questions. So there wasn't anything really that unusual in the process. Next question. This bill is mirrored in the House or similar in the House of you talked to Speaker Rosenberger about vehicles and timing and such like that? Uh, our bill will now go over to their chamber for them to act on. So you don't expect to pass theirs, so you expect them to pass yours? We'll see what happens. Is the governor on board with the TPP funding that you put, you passed uh, today? The governor's aware of it. You'll have to ask them whether they're for it or against it, but they were certainly involved in participating in the process. Why do you support the, that move to, the res TPP? to restore some of that money? Well, I think there are districts that, that need a, a smoother glide path. This bill, the, that restoration does that. Although oddly, the House's original proposal does better for districts in the 12th district than this one. So. Uh, this is a topic from today, but are you going to do anything about the local hiring quotas before you guys leave? Question there was a uh, before you guys went to break, you passed a bill regarding. Uh, you talk about the residency I provisions. Am, I am sir. Yes, we're going to continue to work on that. It's something we'd like to get done. Okay. I think the the 2020 tax commission is going to be a meeting here soon. Uh, where does the severance tax issue stand right now? They've got it in front of them. I think the severance reports supposed to be coming out. I, I've been disappointed, frankly, that they didn't meet the original deadline. Um, so they continue to work on language to try and get that ready to come out. But the 2020 needs to start meeting and start talking about the holistic tax cut. What, so what, what is your personal timeline that you'd like to see on the severance I tax? I stopped giving timelines when they started missing the first one. Is that going to come out this week or do you have a sense of when it will come out? I wanted it out October 1st. What's the holdup? I think it's agreement on the language. I'm trying to work the language out. Agreement between? House and the Senate. House and Senate. Look, I, I think they've been working on it. It's a complicated issue. Things have changed in the marketplace. They're trying to make sure they have an understanding of the impact of those changes. But uh, look, I, you know, we wanted to hit the October 1st deadline. You, you've worried before about delay tactics. Are we seeing delay tactics again? I, I can only tell you you're not seeing it from the Senate. I, I don't think you're seeing it from the House. I think what you're seeing is people trying to wrestle with a complex issue. Well, Given have, uh, I'm sorry if this was asked, but I have two hearings on the because it's a relatively straightforward issue. Uh, everybody who wanted to testify for and against had an opportunity to testify, and, and frankly, it was ready to move. This issue's been around since the summer. It's, it's not, uh, as Senator Seitz said, it's not hugely striking. Uh, it's something people like to make political footballs out of. But the reality, this is about whether or not you're going to give preferential funding to an organization that has a, uh, a, a nasty track record. And the decision was, no, we don't want to do that. It's a public policy of the state. But do you feel that do you feel it's not uh, premature given that the health department hadn't even returned some information? That, that, that's a red herring. LSC did an analysis that said nothing in this bill impacts funding for any program or any state information. The Democrats had that information. What they're looking for is just some reason to throw red herrings, and and you know their reason to delay this was not about the outcome. It was about them wanting more time to pontificate. We talked about the track record of the organization. The Planned Parenthood organization here doesn't do a fetal tissue donation program. Is there something in the track record? Just like organization? this organization doesn't do mammograms. And you heard testimony about that today, too. Uh, there's a lot of things Planned Parenthood doesn't do, but they still do uh, a major impact of promoting abortions. And they use the money that they get from the state to promote abortions. And the short answer is we have a public policy and have had in the state for a long time that we don't support organizations in that capacity. And so for that regard, this bill makes it clear. Uh, as I think Senator Seitz made so eloquent, uh, it's a million three. We spend close to $50 billion on health care, largely to women and children. Uh, and so in the end of this program, this does little uh, for women's health care issues. This bill is not about women's health care. It's about whether you're going to fund an organization that has its senior leadership nationally uh, who, by the way, get money from Ohio, uh, who believe it's good public policy to chop up babies in a way that makes their parts worth more valuable so they can buy a Lamborghini. Make no mistake, that's what this bill was about. That's what Planned Parenthood's done. Uh, that's the nature and culture of their organization. If they want to go out and, and do something else, 
then why is the majority of their organization's services not women's health care? The majority of their services, 94%, is abortions. And so the rest of it, again, uh, to us is red herring. It's not about women's health care. They have access to that health care from a neighborhood of other services and sources. Uh, in fact, uh, the expansion of Medicaid that this General Assembly just approved paying for provides more health care to women across this state than anything Planned Parenthood has ever done. When so you're not concerned about the veracity of the, the, the videos from the Center for Medical Pro Progress? If you talk there's about been a lot the, of talk about them being highly edited and deceptive, et cetera. There's been a lot of talk about that, but there's been little evidence of that. When the entire videos were released, you saw that the editing did not change the nature and content of, of what was said and what was done. And so what that's the part that I haven't heard all of you report about is that, yes, the videos were edited, but you, you can't release hours and hours of videos without editing them. And so that's the, the report, and, and short answer is, I haven't heard anybody uh, come forward and explain if the videos are edited, then why did Planned Parenthood discipline one of the people caught on one of the videos? How does this, when, when does this take effect? Does this affect any current grant money going towards Planned Parenthood? Is it just any future grants? Well, the bills in Ohio take effect after 90 days after they're passed, unless there's an emergency clause. So it would apply to things after that date. There is not a retroactive provision. So it's not going to affect any money that's already been granted to you? Well, I would love to be able to go back and get the $6 million we've given Planned Parenthood over the last five years. I don't think we can do that. So the grants, the contracts that the state already has to provide money? Look, that, you're going to have to ask the specifics of that to the, to the lawyers and the Department of Health and how they're implementing it. But certainly this would go forward to prevent that going forward. Are you surprised that the same week you're passing this bill that the Heartbeat Bill supporters are attacking you for not doing that bill? Look, I, I've had this conversation about the Heartbeat Bill supporters ad nauseum. Uh, the reality is, as I've said over and over again, there isn't a member of our Republican caucus in the Senate that's not pro-life. Um, I've also had uh, very strong conversations with folks in Right to Life and the people who are experts on that. Most people believe that the Heartbeat Bill will endanger more babies' lives, uh, certainly, than it would save. And if you can tell me why it's a better idea to regulate abortions at six weeks than at 20 weeks, when the Supreme Court has struck down regulating them before 20 weeks, uh, then we'll have another conversation about the heartbeat bill. But the reality is the heartbeat bill, uh, while in concept goes to what most members who are pro-life believe in, uh, is not going to save any babies because it's going to get struck down, it's going to get enjoined. Even the sponsors of the heartbeat bill say we anticipate it's going to be enjoined by a federal district court and then the Sixth Circuit immediately after it's passed. Uh, so somebody who wants to raise money and go around making an issue out of action or inaction on the heartbeat bill uh, for their own political gain uh, lacks credibility in my view. One more question. Guys. Do you expect that uh, 214 is going to get fast action in the House? I would anticipate uh, that the House has a similar interest in moving that forward as well. Can I get one more question about the death penalty? Uh, what, what's your thoughts? I mean, we're, again, we're delaying another year on, on executions. Um, what's your thoughts on Is there anything more you can do? What's your thoughts on the, where, where the state's headed with this? Look, the, the, the death penalty, if we're going to conduct it in Ohio, needs to be done fairly. It needs to be done safely. And it needs to be done in a way that um, is transparent. And so from that pers uh, perspective, um, if we can't get the drugs that our protocol calls for, either we need to change our protocols or we need to think about other solutions. And uh, there are a lot of people out there talking about other solutions. And, you know, I've heard everything from using heroin to using nitrogen to going back to the electric chair. Um, that's a debate that probably we need to have. Um, but in the end, the governor has discretion to do what he did. Uh, to the extent that the Department of uh, Correction doesn't believe they have access to follow their current protocols, they need to make sure they get what they need to follow their current protocols or change them. So that's their administrative decision. Uh, I can't take issue with that uh, because I think that's probably required by law. All right. Do you, do you, think, do you, think, yeah, do you think we'll actually bring back Old Sparky? There are options out there, Laura. <laughs> Thanks, guys.